Income tax 2022-2023 pension and annuities software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040, populating it with LACERT tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to it, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, the standard starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson. We've got no dependents up top, 100,000 in the W-2 income. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We've got the 12,900 standard deduction getting us to the 87,050 of the taxable income. Mirroring that over here on our tax worksheet, so we have the mirror in our form our tax formula page two then giving us the tax calculation the 14774 which we're going to plug in here and then we had a 15,000 withholding we are imagining getting us to the tax uh, refund of the 226 mirrored in our formula okay so now let's imagine that there's going to be income from the pension and annuity, which was going to be down here on line 5A. So typically the form that would be received would be a form from a financial institution, which might not look exactly like this, but it will have the relevant boxes uh, for it. And it should say somewhere 1099R distributions from pension annuities and so on and so forth. We're typically focused on box one and two gross distributions and then the taxable amount of them. And then oftentimes we're focused on box seven, of course, which will tell us if it's a normal distribution or if there's some other code related to it. If you don't know what that code means, then you can check your software will often help. Or you can go to the to the uh, instructions that are actually on the form. If you don't have it in your documentation that you're looking at, you can go on the IRS website and look up this form and look at the, the number codings on the right. So typically we would expect if someone is in the area of retirement, a normal distribution, and uh, if meaning they're old enough to be able to pull out the distribution without like a penalty, or if they are not in that time frame, then you might have an early distribution. And then another common code would be the rollover uh, type of code because it's going into, because you're rolling over from one uh, pension to another. So that would be the ones we want to kind of test out here. So let's bring it on back on over. Let's, I'm going to imagine now that Mr. Anderson is in the retirement years. That's when we would most expect to be receiving money from these uh, 1099 R's. If you're dealing with someone that is past their working years, and then we'll run some scenarios where they are before the working years and have some penalties applied. Okay. So just note that I'm in the same data input screen as we were with the IRA. Uh, so the only difference really here is going to be from an IRA to a pension and annuity. It's going to have this box checked off or not. So I'm not going to check it off this time. And then we're going to say that the distribution code, let's start off with a normal distribution, which would be a seven in our code here. And that would be represented right there in the distribution codes. And then I'm going to say that the gross distribution was a thousand, let's say a thousand and the taxable amount is a thousand meaning we had a thousand in box one and generally box two and that would be what we would typically expect because it is going to be taxable the fact that it's a normal distribution should mean that we don't get hit with the penalty on top of the tax we're going to be paying all right jumping back on over now i'm in the tax uh, form 1040 uh, SR because they're in the retirement years, but I like to still kind of look at the 1040 sometimes just so we can see the same format. So I'm going to look at the 1040. It says we're uh, single. Now we've got Mr. Anderson and here it says born uh, before January 2nd, 1958. 
and then I still got the 100,000 that I kept in the W-2 income for now, and then I put a 10,000 down here. I meant to put 1,000. Let's change that to 1,000. 1,000, and pulling that on over. So now it's all gonna be uh, a taxable, so it's in line 5B. That increases the, the taxable, the total income, and so then we have the standard deduction has been increased because they're past retirement age at the 14 seven. Let's mirror that over here. So I'm gonna say, all right, we've got the 100,000. And then on the second page, we have the IRA distributions. Let's add some more rows here. I'm gonna say insert and say this is, now sometimes you could put the IRA distributions and the pension in the same data input area if you want to, or you might wanna break it out. If you break it out, it's kind of nice because you can see it in the two separate lines on the form uh, 1040. Uh, but, but sometimes if you put them together, that's how it's showing on the data input field. So sometimes that makes it easier that way as well. But I'm gonna break them out here and I'm gonna say this is gonna be then the pension and annuities. Let's say pension and annuities. Did I, I, there's no way I spelled that right. There's no way. I did, maybe. I don't know. It says it's not giving me a whatever font. I'm going to say this is going to be black and white. Now, we could have a few of these 1099. So I'm going to just leave some space, make some blue areas down below, dropping it down blue. I'm going to go. If you don't have that color, you can go to the more colors standard and hit. That's the blue I'm going for here. You could you don't have to use that blue. You can use other colors. You can use green if you're comfortable with the standard spreadsheet green. And then the total pension and annuities is on down below. So this is gonna be 1099-1099-R1, right? The first form, R10, R10, R2, D2. This is gonna be then 1000. The total I'm gonna sum up down below equals the sum of these. And that should then be included in my total down here. So I'm just gonna drag that on down. Boom. And there's the 101 pulling into line one of the 1040. So that matches out. My 12,009 has to be increased now by the fact that it's gonna be another 1,750 because they're over 65, I believe. And then we're gonna say we've got the 86.3, 86.3 matching right there. So that looks movie B to the end. Muy bien. Muy bien. T page two, 14609, 14609. Let's put that here, 14609. And then we still have the 15,000 on the withholding, bringing us down to the 391. Okay, so there is that one. That's the first scenario. Let's change it up and imagine that all of their income is coming from is coming from a Where's it coming from pension uh, and or annuity instead of having the 100,000 up top and I'll also break it out so we have we could see the distributions from an IRA versus a pension uh, now this time so if I go to the first tab I'm going to say no more w2 income past the working years so they don't have w2 income anymore that's what we would expect from older taxpayers, right? And then I'm gonna say new tab. Let's make this one just 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 15,000 on the withholdings now. So remember if someone's in their retirement years, then you have to deal with their withholdings because some of their items might be taxable because they're coming out of retirement plans, which they got a tax benefit when they put the money in. So then we have to try to get the withholdings correct for the money that they take out and or make estimated tax payments so they, they don't get hit with penalties and interest. So let's say this was 1099R number two, the second one, but this is an IRA one. Let's say it's a normal distribution, number seven, but I'm gonna just check it off as an IRA distribution and say this was usually a smaller bit for the IRAs, right? It's usually a lesser amount because the, ma the major one might be from their 401k plan or whatever. And then, and then you might have another, like an IRA, which is usually a, a lesser amount. And then you might have multiple of them, right? So in any case, I might not have any withholding for the IRA, let's say it's taxable. And then I'm, so I'm gonna go back on over here. So now 
that first one would be represented 100,000 here, 100,000 here, and then box seven, uh, a normal distribution code seven, and then nothing's checked off. And that second one, I had, what was it, 1,000 that I put? I had 2,000 here and this box and this box, and then distribution code, normal distribution. And this time this one was checked off. So you can see why, like if I look in my data input and I tied this out to what I had in my forms, that's why I said it's kind of nice to have it all in, in one area, because then you can add them to, up in your data input. But when they pull over to the form 1040, now they're gonna be broken out in uh, the two areas. I, I'm going to keep this at 2,000. I said of the 2,000, 1,000 was taxable. Let's make it 2,000 and 2,000. So now you can see they're broken out over here <clears throat> uh, in two separate line items, right? So that and that can kind of mirror. So if I was to mirror that on my side, I could say, okay, the IRA IRA had uh, 2,000 in it, and this one had 100,000, 100,000 in it. And then the withholdings then are not coming from the W-2 income, but rather from the 1099-R of 15,000. And uh, I'll just, yeah, I'll just put them all in one that time. Okay. So now we've got the 202, the 14-7, uh, the 202, the 14-7, the 20, the 202. K paso. Oh, the hundred thousand needs to go from here. The, now we've got the one hundred two. The fourteen seven gets us to the eighty seven three. Eighty seven three. Boom. And then page two. We've got the fourteen uh, eight twenty nine. I'm gonna plug that in. Fourteen eight twenty nine. And then <clears throat> I had this other taxes here. This was a penalty for an early distribution. I'm gonna remove that because I'm gonna say that th they don't have a penalty because th we'll deal with the penalty in a second. And so there's that one. And then that gets us to the 171, 171 on the bottom of the line, the bottom of the line. Okay, so now let's run a scenario where, where, they ha where they're in their working years and they made the decision to pull the money out of like a, a, a 401k and they weren't in the retirement years and therefore we have a box one check off, which is gonna be, you get hit with the penalties, interest and having to pay the taxes. So I'll reformat that, give me a sec. Okay, so we're back to our normal starting point, single Anderson, 100,000 W2 wages, 12,950, 8750 here. Now we're gonna add the fact that they got money out of their pension plan because they changed jobs and they're just like I'll just pull the money out then because I don't need it in my 401k plan in my old job and so I'll just pull it out and it's like well, okay and then we're going to say this is going to be 1099 R and let's say that it was distribution code one now and let's say they pulled a significant amount out this time let's say they pulled out let's say they pulled out like 35,000 like, yeah I'll just I'll just go to the Bahamas with the 35,000 after going because i don't need that job man i don't need that job and then they're like okay so now they pulled it out before the retirement because it was distribution code one so that would be 35 here 35 here distribution code one here and then we're going to go let's see what happens so now we're going to say thirty-five thousand, and now we've got thirty-five thousand in income and they're going to get hit with a penalty on it right that's where the real kicker is so, and so, and they're gonna be in their working years. So if they're still making a decent amount of income, then they got hit with the income on top of that. So that's gonna be taxed at a higher tax bracket than possibly in their retirement years when maybe, when maybe they're not gonna have to report 135,000 of income because they're, they're just gonna pull out what they live on. And maybe they don't need to pull everything out of the retirement plan that that's taxable at that time, right? So in any case, now we've got the 135. Let's mirror that over here in my worksheet. So we're gonna say, boom, uh, income. And we've got the distribution. I'm gonna say is 35,000, nothing on this one. Up top, we've got the uh, employer one, 100,000 with regards to the withholdings. 
W2 withholdings instead of the withholdings here, W2 withholdings, bringing that back on over to page numero uno. 135.14.7. This is back down to just the 12.950 standard deduction. Okay. 122.050. So that's going to be 122.050. Mui B to the end. Second page. Calculation 23.128 on the tax. So we'll go 23.128 on the tax. And then, and then we've got this 3,500. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Where did that come from? Page two, schedule two. And we see that we have this additional tax on IRA or whatever distributions, 3,500. So that's gonna be down here in our worksheet, added tax, other taxes. Let's jump on over there. And this is coming from the additional tax. Let's just say on 1099R instead of, so this is a 1099, 1099 number one. I'm just going to say this comes from equals the the form here and the tax is 10% times 0.1. There's the penalty. Boom. So that gets pulled on over and so then so it's a pretty a pretty hefty you know issue. That's the point. You don't want to have to pay taxes on it in your working years when you're at your higher rates of tax brackets and then get hit with a 10% penalty on top. That's the point that we're trying to make here. So tell people not to do that. Roll, what do you do instead? You roll it over. Over. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep those doggies rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rawhide. 359. Sorry about that. I got excited. 359. That brings us to the 11987. Okay, so then you roll it over. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's what we tell them. So we say, what do you do? Well, you go to the new place and wherever you want to roll it over and make sure you can roll it over so the distribution code doesn't say one, but instead says G or something like that, which is a direct rollover. So if it was a direct rollover, then we would expect something to be in box one, but not in box two distribution code telling us it's a rollover. So then I'm going to say, now I've got box one, but not box two, not taxable. Scrolling back on over, you would expect something like this then. And you'd say, whew, 100,000 W-2 income, pension 35,000 here, but it was rolled over. Don't tax me on that, por favor. It's not included in the taxable income. Therefore, we're back to the starting point. What's the moral of the story? Don't be stupid or you know meaning in this case don't roll the money roll it over don't take it out if you don't need it because that the whole point of putting it in there is you're trying to avoid the penalties and interest and taxes and whatnot 